Hello students, today I am going to teach you the chapter in the kingdom of fools from moments. I will not discuss about the themes and the messages, whatever the story wants to convey, but I will directly start the story at first. It is believed that fools are so dangerous that only very wise people can manage them. Who are the fools in this story and what happens to them? Let's check it out. In the kingdom of fools, both the king and the minister were idiots. They did not want to run things like other kings. So they decided to change night into day and day into night. They ordered that everyone should be awake at night, till their fields and run their businesses only after dark and go to bed as soon as the sun came up. Anyone who disobeyed would be punished with death. The people did as they were told for fear of death. The king and the minister were delighted at the success of their project. One day a guru and his disciple arrived in the city. It was a beautiful city. It was broad daylight but there was no one about. Everyone was asleep, not a mouse tearing. Even the cattle had been taught to sleep by day. The two strangers were amazed by what they saw around them and wandered around town till evening when suddenly the whole town woke up and went about its nightly business. So you see, there was a kingdom where lived a king and a minister and they were absolute fools and idiots. They wanted to do something unusual and rebellious. They wanted to do something which was totally different from other kingdoms. What did they do? They made day as nights and nights as days. During the daytime, everybody was directed to be asleep. Even the animals were conditioned in such a way that they learned to sleep during the day. And during the night time, all the businesses, all the errands run about. So everything was unusual in that place. One day, a guru and his disciple came to that kingdom and they were awestruck. They were amazed to see that the town was an absolute beauty. It was such a picturesque place. Everywhere there was silence and everybody was sleeping. They kept on wondering and wondering but could not find a soul awake. Finally, the evening approached and as the evening approached everybody woke up and all the businesses started so they were amazed to see such a kingdom now the second unusual thing the two men were very hungry now that the shops were open they went to buy some groceries to their astonishment they found that everything caused the same a single doo-doo whether they bought a measure of rice or a bunch of bananas, it cost a duddu. The guru and his disciple were delighted. They had never heard of anything like this. They could buy all the food they wanted for just a rupee. Now the second unusual thing in the kingdom of fools. Everything a person wants to buy, everything and anything was available only for a only for a doo-doo, only by paying a doo-doo. Doo-doo is an unit, um, a unit, an unit of measurement. Okay, currency was only a doo-doo. That is, it is similar to a rupee. So, everything was cheaply available there. Now, after they took their food, the guru was a very wise man. He was a man of wisdom. He realized that this is a kingdom of fools and fools are unpredictable illogical so nothing can be determined about them they can do anything anytime they do not take anybody's criticism or suggestion they only blindly follow without any logic what they want to do so the guru now advised the disciple that this is a kingdom of fools and we should leave as early as possible. 
but the disciple was a petty ordinary man who was attracted by then tempted by then the cheap availability of all food items he was attracted to the cheap availability of food items and he wanted to stay there to enjoy a life of fullness you know enjoy a life of fullness with foods and eating so he wanted to stay there despite guru's warning he did not want to go so finally the guru could not convince him and decided to leave alone now see they are all fools this won't last very long and you can't tell what they will do to you next but the disciple would not listen to the guru's wisdom and finally the guru left what happened to the disciple the disciple stayed on ate his fill underlying the lines in the second paragraph third line the disciple stayed on ate his fill every day bananas and ghee and rice and wheat and grew fat like a street side sacred bull so he stayed there and indulged himself into gluttony he went on eating and eating and eating because everything was so easily and cheaply available and he became a fat man now an incident occurred in that kingdom what is the incident one bright day A thief broke into a rich merchant's house. He had made a hole in the wall and sneaked in. And as he was carrying out his plundery, his loot, the wall of the old house collapsed on his head and killed him on the spot. His brother ran to the king and complained, "Your Highness, when my brother was pursuing his ancient trade, ancient trade of robbery." A wall fell on him and killed him. This merchant is to blame. He should have built a good, strong wall. You must punish the wrongdoer and compensate the family for this injustice. The king said, "Justice will be done. Do not worry." And at once summoned the owner of the house. Now you see the condition. A man was was stealing. Was conducting a robbery in a in another man's house and in that process of robbery he was killed and his younger brother went to the king who was an idiot and considered him to be a very impartial and fair king able to you know give justice to everyone and as this robber's brother pursued him we for justice he decided to call the merchant in whose house the burglary burglary was done so let us see what happens when the merchant arrived the king questioned him what is your name such and such your highness were you at home when the dead man burgled your house yes my lord he broke in and the wall was weak it fell on him the accused pleads guilty your wall killed this man's brother you have murdered a man you we have to punish you lord said the helpless merchant i did not put up the wall it's really the fault of the man who built the wall he did not build it right you should punish him who is that now you see the merchant was called the merchant came and he admitted the process of the death of the robber and the king told you must be punished you were indirectly responsible for his death so you murdered him and now the merchant pleaded innocence and told your highness i know you are a fair and just king so please listen to me it is not my fault it is the fault of the mason the bricklayer who built the wall during my father's time he made the wall which was weak and it fell on that person and he was killed so if you really want to give justice please your highness give it to the proper criminal to the proper miscreant the king thought and thought and he thought himself to be very partial he thought i am going to give justice 
so let me call this brick slayer this mason who built the wall and the process of blame game started so the first person who was summoned was the merchant he gave the blame on the mason the mason by then was an old old man he built the wall during his father's time so now the mason was called the mason was an old man so now you see what happens the king sent out messengers to bring in the brick slayer who had built the wall they brought him and tied hand and foot you there did you build this man's wall in his father's time yes my lord i did what kind of a wall is this that you build it is fallen on a poor man see the irony a poor man a man who was conducting a robbery just because he is dead he becomes a symbol of sympathy a poor man and kill him you have murdered him we have to punish you by death before the king could order the execution now the mason started pleading innocence he told my lord you are a fair and a just king my lord i know you will give justice it is not my fault it is the fault of a girl a dancing girl who went up and down up and down up and down the street with her jingling anklets and that distracted my attention i was tempted by the sound and the lady and i looked at her and that made me make a bad wall and so the wall toppled on the man and killed him so you see your highness it is not my fault it is the fault of the dancing girl who distracted me from my work now the king thought yes the case deepens the king was an idiot we know it right from the beginning look how he is believing each and every claim right from the beginning to emit justice to a person who himself is a miscreant till now he proves to be an utter foolish person now he calls the dancing girl the dancing girl was also an old woman by that time the dancing girl now an old woman came trembling to the court did you walk up and down the street many years ago while this poor man was building a wall did you see him yes my lord i remember it very well so you did walk up and down with your ankles jingling you were young and you distracted him so he built a bad wall it has fallen on a poor burglar the author has consciously set her eyes mocked burglar and killed him you have killed an innocent man you will have to be punished so you are indirectly the responsible for the killing of the man for the murder of the man and you are the main culprit she thought for a minute again she started indulging into a blame game first the blame was on the merchant he passed the blame on the mason he passed the blame on the dancing girl and she is again passing the blame on a jeweler the fourth person she thought for a minute and said my lord i know why i was walking up and down the street i had given some gold to the goldsmith to make some jewelry for me he was a lazy scoundrel he made so many excuses said he would give it now and he would give it and then and so on all day and made me walk up and down to his house a dozen times that was when this brick slayer saw me it's not my fault my lord it is the damned goldsmith's fault poor thing she is absolutely right thought the king weighing the evidence we have got the real culprit at last get the goldsmith wherever he is hiding at once so you see everybody is afraid of the king naturally everybody the subjects the animals even the people so uh, now this lady passed on the blame to a particular jeweler who promised her to deliver her jewelry item but could not give her so but was making her fake promises of the time and date of the delivery so she had to rush to her house each and every time and he was 
making it a delay so you see the jeweler was the real culprit and he must be caught and he must be punished now the jeweler after hearing this story hid himself and he was taken out and he was brought in front of the king and he has now again a story to tell what is the story let us see my lord i am a poor goldsmith it is true i made this dancer come many times to my door i gave her excuses because i could not finish making her jewelry before i finish the rich merchant's orders they had a wedding coming and they would not wait you know how impatient rich men are who is this rich merchant who kept you from finishing this poor woman's jewelry made her walk up and down which distracted this bricklayer which made a mess of his wall which has now fallen on an innocent man and killed him can you name him the goldsmith named the merchant and he was none other than the original owner of the house whose wall had fallen now justice had come a full circle you see what happened now this jeweler came and told yes my lord it happened but listen to the story behind it there was a rich merchant who was also giving me hurry because there was a wedding in their family and in order to give his jewelry items for his family i was let to deliver the jewelry of the dancing girl so you see it is not my fault it is the rich merchant's fault who continuously pestered behind me to give the delivery fast quicker yes the king was a fair and a partial idiot king he wanted to give the proper justice for the death of a criminal so what did he do he wanted to know the name of the merchant and this merchant happened to be the same merchant okay and finally he thought finally the whole circle of justice came back to its original sinner now the merchant pleaded innocence he told my lord it was my father not me but the king denied you have inherited your father's property you have inherited your father's sins so you were alive i will put you on stake somebody needs to die somebody needs to be executed because there is a crime committed the death of a robber so you see somebody needs to be hanged because i am the king and i am going to conduct this execution in front of a mob you know everything is prepared the miscreant must be punished so now what will happen and a new stake was made ready for the execution and as the servants sharpened the stake they found it you know a big broader and bigger for the thin merchant now what will happen the minister noticed it went to the king and told him that my lord you see the stake is much more bigger than the merchant much more broader than that thin merchant it won't make a good show so we need to you know, we need to put on stake a fat man what is his sin his obesity is his sin ha huh? yes because we need to get a fat man we are not putting the merchant on stake so what will be the logic behind it that is the that is what the author mocks in the story fools do not go by logic they are unpredictable they can do anything any time which will seem suitable for them so the two fools suddenly decided that merchant would would not be a suitable you know suitable uh, for the stake merchant uh, is not at all applicable for that broad snake uh, sorry sorry stake okay he is not a good bait for that stake so we need to find a fat man and it would make a very good scene of the execution so finally a fat man was searched and the disciple was found over there the disciple by that time was a fat man we know it beforehand what shall we do we need a fat man so disciple had fattened himself for months on bananas and rice and wheat and ghee now he was caught and brought for the execution without any reason without any logic what have i done wrong i am innocent i am a sanyasi 
that may be true but it is a royal decree decree means order that we should find a man fat enough to fit the stick they said and carried him to the place of execution he remembered his wise guru's words this is a city of fools you don't know what they will do next while he was waiting for his impending death he prayed to his guru in his heart asking him to hear his cry wherever he was the guru saw everything in a vision he had magical powers he could see far he could see future he could see present he could see past he arrived at once to save his disciple who had got himself into that scrape scrape means a problematic situation a fix as soon as he arrived he scolded the disciple and told him something in a whisper then he went on to the king and addressed oh wisest of kings who is greater the guru or the disciple of course the guru no doubt about it why do you ask then put me to the stake first put my disciple to death after me when the disciple heard this he understood there is a plan behind began to clamor clamor means blabber make sound me first me first the guru said the disciple into a fight both of them who should go first he is telling no i will go first no i will go first why do you want to die we chose him because we needed a fat man the king interrupted you should not ask me such questions put me to death first replied the guru why there is some mystery now the king thought nobody wants to die these two are fighting these two are fighting for death who is going to die first there must be a mystery behind it he asked the guru the guru told i can tell you the reason only on one condition what is the condition after listening to my story you are going to put me on the stake first and then my disciple the second so will you promise to put me to death if i tell you ask the guru the king gave him solemn word and the guru took took him aside out of the servants ear shot and whispered to him why because the guru knew that the king is an idiot the king is a fool and the minister is a fool but other people merely obey the orders of the king because they are afraid of them but they are not as foolish as them so do you know why we want to die right now the two of us we have been all over the world but we have never found a city like this or a king like you the stake is the stake of the god of justice a new one it has never had a criminal on it whoever dies on it first will be reborn as the king of this country and whoever goes next will be the future minister of the country we are sick of this ascetic life it would be nice to enjoy ourselves as king and minister for a while now keep your word my lord and put us to death me first ha huh? remember the king was now thrown into deep thought he did not want to lose the kingdom to someone else in his next birth he needed time so he ordered the execution postponed to the next day and talked in secret with his minister it's not right for us to give over the kingdom to others in the next life let's go on the stake ourselves and we will be reborn as king and minister again holy men do not tell lies he said and the minister agreed so you see the guru used his wisdom his intelligence to convince the king indirectly what did he go and say he said he tempted him you know he said that whoever goes to this newly made stake by ordered by you a man so fair and so just so high so majestic and this stake is the stake of god god of justice so you know i have got a divine message that whoever goes to the stake at first becomes the ruler of the whole country in the next birth i am tired of this life of sacrifice and you know holiness living a life of a saint now i want luxury and entertainment i want to lead a voluptuous life so i want to go to the stake taking my disciple the king was enticed tempted he went back he postponed the execution for the day and discussed with his minister now why did the king believe the sanyasi the guru number 1 because the king believed everyone he is a fool you see whoever told him appeal to him he believed him so he also believed him because he is a fool and he also believed him because he had an idea in his mind preconceived idea that is what fools are made of 
they don't give room to criticisms they don't listen to criticisms they don't listen to any other suggestions their head are just blockheads you know they are like the horses in a race who look at the front without looking beside so you see he was a fool and he considered that holy men never tell lies so he believed him and moreover he thought nobody wants to die these two people are fighting over death who wants to die first so naturally there is some seriousness in their words finally what did he do he told the executioners we will send the criminals tonight when the first man comes to you put him to death first then do the same to the second man those are my orders don't make any mistake that night the king and his minister went secretly to the prison released the guru and the disciple disguised themselves as the two and as arranged beforehand with loyal servants were taken to the stake and promptly executed so they were hanged they were executed they were dead now when the bodies were taken down to be thrown to crows and vultures the people panicked they saw before them the dead bodies of the king and the minister the city was in confusion all night they mourned and discussed the future of the kingdom some people they needed somebody to govern them they could not you know do things alone so some people suddenly thought of the guru and the disciple and caught up with them as they were about to leave the town unnoticed we people need a king and a minister said some one others agreed they begged the guru and the disciple to be their king and their minister it did not take many arguments to persuade the disciple but it took longer to persuade the guru they finally agreed to rule the kingdom of the foolish king and the silly minister on the condition that they could change all old laws from then on night would again be night and day would again be day and you could get nothing for it to do it became like any other place so you see the guru by his wisdom not only you know helped the people of that kingdom to be like any other normal king but relieved them of the hands of those two fools and also relieved his disciple also helped escape his disciple so what is the message that the author wants to convey through this story first never stay with fools you know forsake their company because fools are stubborn people why stubborn because they have some rules within their heart and brain inscribed in their brain and they do not want to hear to anybody else because they think that they will be fooled and they have high esteem and high notions about themselves they are stubborn they are unpredictable they are illogical so you can never convince them if they are doing anything wrong and you will also be followed into the same thing if you keep their company so the first message is forsake the company of the fools because fools are irrational illogical unpredictable and the second thing is fools can never be convinced by logic but by wisdom and intelligence because they don't understand logic and moreover if you stay with fools gradually your quality will be diminished and theirs will be upgraded bringing you both to a same level you have heard that uh, you know proverb about rotten potatoes so you should keep good company a man is known by the company he keeps and finally throughout the story the author has mocked and satirized the king and the minister who are the representatives of the otherwise foolish people who considered themselves to be very intelligent and very fair and very partial sorry impartial okay so students i hope you are able to understand the chapter read it thoroughly bye and take care okay